Hey everyone, this is a quick overview of some of the things that I've done to my Arcade 1UP Star Wars Pinball uh, machine. Uh, from the get-go, I intended this to be a conversion to a Pinball FX3 based virtual pinball cabinet. Uh, I knew going in that the hardware that Arcade 1UP provides is not the greatest. Um, they do a lot of strange things such as uh, needing to run it at 720p even though they supply a 1080p display with it. No settings for the for the LCD, so contrast uh, on the stock board is very, very bad. Um, it, it, all the blacks look washed out and grayish. And uh, even the DMD display, like the actual uh, scaling on it was just horrendous. So, um, you know, I understand that they need to uh, cost reduce and make sure that they can fit everything within a certain uh, price range so that they can actually sell these things. So as long as you go into them, Knowing this and your intent is to actually have a uh, three-quarter scale cabinet, which is what I was going after, so I want this to be able to fit in my office, then everything else is basically just uh, putting a little bit of uh, elbow grease into the equation and you've got yourself a pretty neat and very, very solid um, cabinet without having to like build your own from scratch. So uh, going over a few of the things that I've done to it, um, this is not going to be in-depth, I'm not going to explain exactly how I did everything. That'll come in, a, in another video, or you can always search. There's uh, quite a few videos out there where people have done the same thing. But um, I installed a VS Display uh, LCD driver board for my uh, Playfield, and that allows me, oh, the Playfield LCD display, that allows me to uh, not only be able to connect a PC to it and uh, drive it at 1080p 60 hertz, but also make adjustments to the color and contrast. And I can tell you this display is amazing. I, I think I'm pretty sure it's an IPS panel um, because it has some amazing view angles once you get everything dialed in. And the VS Display Board actually provides additional um, functionality. It adds, uh, I think it's called the uh, dynamic uh, contrast range or something like that, DCR. So it just makes it look really good. It makes it to the point where it starts looking proper like an actual play field. Uh, where you can actually see the, the lighting looks like there's actual little LEDs behind the play phone and all that stuff So that's something you do not get from the stock board at all uh, One of the biggest complaints when it comes to these machines is just how washed out the uh, the stock um, display looks and It's ironic because it's not really the hardware uh, as far as the LCD goes. It's the hardware as far as the actual uh, board that runs everything so uh, Replace that I've got an Optiplex 9020 and there's an SFF, SFF form factors. Uh, what is it? Small form factor? SFF? Kind of redundant, but um, it's running an i7-4790 um, for uh, quad core, 3.6 gigahertz, I think it is. And then um, that machine is very limited as far as the uh, GPUs that I can put in it. So it is running two um, Quadro K620s. Uh, one of them I have it um, dedicated for the playfield. That's the one that's on the 16x slot. And then I have one in a 4x slot, which is fine for what it's going to be doing. But that's the one that's actually driving uh, via HDMI my uh, DMD display, which I also turn into a mini uh, back glass. And I'll go into that in just a moment. Um, the HDMI carries the audio signal as well. And the cool thing is the way that um, Arcade one Up did this, that display assembly in the back has the uh, basically just a single HDMI that comes in and that actually uh, also goes into the uh, audio amplifier internally and drives the speaker. So by virtue of you passing an HDMI signal to it, you would not only gain your DMD display capability, but you also drive the audio for the game without needing to uh, do any extra hookups of, uh, you know, like RCA cables or whatever, you know, pin angling, all of it within the, the, the same unit. Um, the uh, the display itself, actually, I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about this. But uh, one of the things that you gain when you do this, uh, aside from the obvious, which is you can run at 1080p and adjust the colors, is that uh, the PC version, the Steam uh, uh, Pinball FX3 uh, versions of the tables, um, the quality of the textures is much higher than what you get from the one running on the uh, stock board. And I don't know if it's a limitation on the Android version per se, or they actually scale it down farther, but I can tell you that the textures look really bad. They, they look like they're way lower res, um, even when something is zoomed in, it's just much lower resolution. And the uh, the 3D animations that happen on the, on the virtual boards, uh, they, they lack 
some of the details. Uh, in fact, it looks like some of them are lacking even uh, some of the polygon counts. So they definitely use simpler models, uh, probably to keep the uh, the performance high, being able to push 60 uh, uh, FPS, which completely get it. Um, you know, again, there it's a it's a, a balancing act with the cost and the performance. So uh, I'm not faulting Arcade One Up for making that decision because these machines are relatively inexpensive um, for what they offer, and they do offer like if you if you're not super picky about it you can enjoy the way it comes. However, if you want to have the full visual, uh, uh, you know, uh, experience, you definitely have to convert this uh, on your own. So again, a, a VS Display uh, driver board is what's running the, uh, the display, being able to connect to my uh, PC. I'm doing that via DVI, believe it or not. Um, two reasons for that, because the uh, Quadro K620s actually have a DVI and a display port, so I'm using the display port for my HDMI out, and uh, that way I can I can use a dedicated DVI uh, cable for for that, and then the uh, the display port slash HDMI, which basically goes out to HDMI, uh, will drive my DMD and the audio as I was explaining earlier. So I'll move up to the uh, DMD, which is actually the coolest part of this, uh, the way I have it set up. So what I did was a lot of people have been um, uh, oh, and you can see over there in the distance, let me see if you can see my finger. That's Attack from Mars. I haven't built it yet, but uh, I'm keeping that one completely stuck. That's going in the basement. Uh, this is going into my office, and that's why I'm making it a little bit better. Um, so a lot of people have been replacing the marquee with uh, a 21.5 inch uh, LCD. I think there's an Acer model that fits perfectly. Uh, props to Cool Toy for discovering that and also for providing the information. Uh, awesome channel. If you haven't uh, checked them out, go check them out. Uh, but for now, I think I'm gonna keep it the way it is right now because uh, my intent is to have this go with the decor in my office, which is a lot of Star Wars theme stuff. And uh, and this is actually, you know, it's really nice. I really like the, the artwork. Uh, resolution of the artwork is really good. It looks excellent. So what I did instead was uh, arcade one up by default. Uh, let me see if I can zoom into this real quick and I'll show you what I did here. Oops, I'm trying to change the... Uh, yep. So arcade one up themselves runs the DMD display centered in on this screen. And this screen is actually an 800 by 480 uh, LCD panel that goes beyond the uh, the frame border up and down. Uh, they just kind of masked it so it looks a little bit more like the aspect ratio of the DMD. But it's not even, even with their efforts to do so, that's not the, uh, the, the, the right aspect ratio. The DMD displays are actually four by one. And so that what they had to do was they ended up having to center the DMD display. Let me see, this is like super odd. But like that right there was actually centered here, which means that there was a lot of desk space above and below and it doesn't help that the contrast isn't the greatest so you see a lot of like that gray grayish kind of colors but what was even worse is that the arcade one up hardware scaled that screen as well i think it actually ran it at 720 uh as far as the width uh, resolution uh probably 720 by 480 or something like that instead of 800 by 480 and that made it so that the dmd display has some bizarre scaling artifacting. You can see that if you go to any YouTube videos that show the stock uh, RK1 of pinball machines, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll spot it right away. There's some weird lines that happen in like certain intervals that are very random. They're not even like even. And it happens both on the vertical and the horizontal. So very distracting. Basically what happens is that some of the lines and the pixels uh, have to be actually stretched out in order for it to scale. And it did not look good at all. So in the case of, if I actually move over here, my shirt, makes it look a little bit better. Um, so what I did here was I actually positioned the DMD display once I was able to get this into cabinet mode, which requires a code from Zen. Uh, I moved the DMD display up, or I should say, I experimented until I, I figured out how to place it on that specific spot, which required me to find how many pixels down was the beginning of the actual uh, viewable area in the frame. And then um, I set it to the proper resolution, which is 800 by 200, which is the four by one aspect ratio. And then you had basically half of the screen below it that was available. So I was like, okay, well, let me use that for the back glass. And what I did was I centered the back glass and then there's actually a wallpaper, a Windows wallpaper on that screen. Uh, as you can see, it's like a honeycomb uh, effect to kind of fill in the sites a little bit. So it just kind of gives a little bit more visual appeal. 
Um, you can do whatever you want, obviously, in that in that regard. Um, there's other wallpapers that I can uh, implement. But the bottom line is, I was able to repurpose that DMD for both the uh, DMD itself, the score uh, uh, display, as well as uh, back glass art, which is excellent. And that obviously changes when you when you uh, are selecting tables automatically, uh, as long as you have all that artwork in the proper folder structure within um, FX3. Tons of tutorials out there on how to do that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this is set up. Not going to go into details about all the technical like coordinates and stuff that I had to do to be able to get to that point on this video because this video is already over 10 minutes long and I, I'm trying to keep it below 15. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how I have it set up. Uh, hopefully that kind of whets your appetite a little bit for more information because I am going to have a video that's a little more thorough. There are tons of videos on the actual hardware-based uh, modifications that I'm in the process of doing or have already completed, so I'm probably not going to spend too much time on those because I this would be my first time. I wouldn't be doing anybody justice by attempting to explain something I don't have a lot of experience with. However, on the software side, uh, especially since I've been doing a lot of experimentation with the um, some of the settings for the screen display as, we're, as well as the, um, uh, I have a, a development board that I'm using for the accelerometer, uh, for the notch and all that stuff. Those things I intend to cover in a little bit more detail to kind of help people out. Uh, I've noticed that the information is out there if you look, but it can take a while. So hopefully I can put it in a format that is a little bit easier and people can just jump straight to the video and just you know, even if you fast forward a little bit and get to where the details are, that's kind of uh, what my intent is. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So uh, I, this is not supposed to be a review of the RK1 uh, pinball machines, but I'll say that I'm pretty happy with the actual physical aspects of the machine. This is a perfect scale cabinet for, uh, it doesn't use a lot of space, so you don't have to be hauling it around and have it in a dedicated spot in the house. You can move it from one room to another if needed. Um, it's still heavy enough that is very stable but not too heavy that is not uh you know easy to move around if you need to so this is one of those where uh if you have it in your office for a while and you want to move it to the basement or move it to you know another room <clears throat> it's a few minutes worth of effort instead of having to <clears throat> you know call your neighbor or your friend or whatever to come over and help you out and then offer them tacos or beer in uh, in return so uh not all that with this it's a perfect scale i think um the Stock screen looks amazing once it is dialed in. Uh, everything looks perfect. Uh, no complaints there. And um, I'll say that I'm probably going to keep it uh, with the screen size. It's actually really good. Once you have everything dialed in, it looks great. So I still don't need to, to upgrade it. Some people are putting 27, 32 inch uh, LCDs. The 32s will require some modifications. I'll let you know. 27 is a little bit of modifications, but a little bit easier. Uh, but the 24 inch or 23.8 inch, you know, it's obviously what this is made for. This is good enough for me. I don't have any aspirations to run this with 120 hertz display at this point in time. So um, now that's not to say that I that won't change in the future. If it does, then obviously I might make a, an update video. But for now, I'm going to keep it as is. Uh, solenoids are not activated right now. You can reuse them. I have the relays to do so and some of the wiring stuff, but I'm waiting on some parts. So um, if you intend to do this, and you absolutely must have uh, the solenoids working. Uh, keep in mind that there's some extra stuff that you need to do, but it is doable and you can reuse the ones that come with the machine. Um, but everything else about it, like physically, is is great. It's very sturdy, very, uh, you know, heavy enough. And um, uh, I actually did a modification for the uh, power switch. I extended the power switch for the, for the Optiplex uh, computer that I'm running this on. So, um, you know, all that stuff kind of fits well. But... I'll uh, work on the more thorough video to show you guys how I did some of these configurations and, uh, you know, maybe in the process I'll uh, I'll show some of the hardware modifications as well, not just the software stuff, and hopefully help uh, some of you. So, um, hope you enjoy this. Uh, let me actually, before I go, take a few seconds just to show you real quick how that um, back glass display changes, because I think it's pretty cool. I think it's excellent. All right, well, this is almost at 15 minutes, so 
I will let you guys go, but um, stay tuned for a more thorough video.